Hi, and welcome back to Hudson Appliance for another episode of Wicked Good Food. I'm your host, Matt Williams, and today it's all about lobsters. We're going to make four different lobster dishes today. We're going to make a uh, very quick but just awesome, awesome lobster roll. We're going to make a butter poached lobster, which is just an awesome way to do it. So easy to eat for your guests or for yourself. We are going to make a baked stuffed lobster as well as some lobster bisque. Lobster is one of those things that it's a, it's a luxury food, but it's, it's an attainable luxury. It's not like going out and buying a Jaguar or you know, having yourself a yacht or something. If you want to, you can afford a lobster. These lobsters were pretty cheap. Um, if you get them at the right time, they can be less than $5 a pound. First thing I'm going to do to get started is I'm actually going to drop two lobsters into this pot. See how he's flipping his tail like that? That's a good thing. That means he's nice and lively. So these first two are going to be for our lobster roll. You want to make sure there's plenty of water that the lobsters are completely submerged. You want to make sure it's a nice rolling boil. And you also want to make sure that it's heavily salted. The ideal thing to use is seawater. We don't have any seawater in Hudson today, so I'm just going to really heavily salt this water. Now, there, you can also co um, cook the lobsters by steaming them, which is probably a better way to go because you don't lose any of that flavor from the boiling. But this is such an easy way to do it, I figured we'd do it the easiest way. So these two are going to cook completely. We're going to pull them out. And then we're going to take one more, which is going to be for our butter poached. And I'm going to show you how we're going to cook it only a little bit so that we can relatively easily remove all the meat from the shell. And then we're going to cook it in our butter so that it's at its perfect doneness right when we want it. So I'm just going to stick these back here and take a peek at these. So these are about a pound, a pound and a quarter in between there. We're going to let these cook for just about 10 minutes. And uh, I should actually check the time. All right, perfect. So we're going to start and cut some of our vegetables for our bisque. So what a bisque is, it's essentially a pureed soup. It's thick, it usually has some cream in it, and pureed seafood. So we're going to add carrots, onion, celery, and fennel. I've already peeled a couple carrots. Now I'm not really concerned about how big I cut them or that they're perfect, because by the time the soup is cooked, the carrots will be cooked too. The celery, I'm just going to use a couple ribs of celery. I rinsed these off earlier, but I'm going to trim off the ends here. And same thing, I'm going to give these a quick rough chop. That's probably enough. We're not going to use too much. And an onion. So these are all those real nice aromatic vegetables that are going to complement the flavor of our lobster. So once again, this can be kind of a rough chop. Cut both ends off. Now I didn't preheat my pan at all because these induction pans, actually yes I did. These induction pans heat up so, so fast, this induction stove. So I'm going to start to get our pan to warm up a little bit. And the other thing we're going to use is some fennel. Now people, not everyone is familiar with fennel, but fennel is a wonderful, wonderful um, vegetable. It kind of looks like dill on the top. These fronds will stick out, you know, a good foot and a half, two feet sometimes. Um, if you're at the supermarket and you're looking at your fennel, one of the things you want to look at is how far do these stick out? Because what happens is they start to rot a little bit at the end first, and what they'll do is they'll keep chopping them down. They'll peel outer layers. This one actually, although it's chopped down a bit, is in pretty good shape. It's heavy. It's heavy for its size, which is what we're looking for. So I'm going to cut the top completely off. Now, for what we're doing, we're not, I'm not going to use any of this today. But this is great as a garnish. This can be great tossed around in salads. So now we'll take this bulb of fennel, which is a great anise flavor. I'm going to cut it in half. And if you can see, there's a core that runs right here in the middle. I'm going to use the tip of my knife and remove that core out of there. Just get that out of the way. And then I'm going to rough chop some of this. If there's any really um, 
brown parts on one of the levels, just get rid of that part. You don't have to get rid of the whole thing. We check our time here. All right, we're doing all right. So next I want to, I've got carrots, beautiful. I'm gonna throw my butter in the pan. This pan actually heated up more than I wanted it to. So we'll probably get a little sizzle. So I'm gonna add our vegetables right away to help cool that pan down. Cause I'm not really looking to brown these vegetables at all. Beautiful. That'll quiet down in a second. So we're just gonna sweat our vegetables. Now the other thing we're going to use vegetables for is our baked stuffed lobster. So I'm gonna take the other half of this onion and for this, I wanna be a little more careful with how I cut it. And I'm gonna cut this, oops, remove the rest of this peel. I'm gonna cut this pretty fine. Like you've seen me do before, I make little cuts, making sure not to go through the core of the onion. And I'm just gonna come and cut perpendicular to those. Perfect. All right. And that's actually gonna be all we're gonna use. I'm gonna put this right in the cup that had our butter in it. So that's for that. Now let's talk about lobsters for a second. We'll grab one of these guys. So like I said, give this a little stir. It's important that when you're picking out lobsters, they're lively. See how he raises his claws up in the air like he's mad at me? He should be mad at me. Um, he doesn't know what's about to happen to him, but it's not, it's not gonna be good for him. Actually, that's an interesting thing, is you can look on the bottom and you can tell whether it's a him or a her, and I was wrong, this is actually a girl lobster. And the way you tell is you look underneath the tail. Underneath the tail, there are a series of these swimmerettes, they, they're called. There are these little fins here. This very top pair, they're in a female lobster, they're kind of light and feathery, and in a male lobster, they're really firm and they actually end up being parallel to each other. In the females, they end up being crossed. But that's how you tell. Who cares? Some people care. Some people will purposely request a female lobster because females are the only ones that have eggs. And sometimes you can get some of the roe inside the lobster's tail when you go to cook it. And people want the chance to have that. Not all females will have it, but people want the opportunity to have it. A way to kind of wake up your lobsters if they're real cold is you can kind of flip under here and they should flip back at you. Now obviously this lobster has bands on its claws the reason they put the bands on the claws, we'd like to think, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit actually, because this stove cranks, it's awesome. Um, the reason they have bands is not necessarily to protect us from them, but it's to protect them from each other. Because lobsters will actually eat each other and they'll damage each other. In particular, when they're in a lobster pound, a big um, pot with a whole bunch of other lobsters, they, they get mad and they go at each other. So we want to keep our lobsters in the best shape we can so they're banded. Another way to look for a quality lobster is look at the length of their antennas. So each of these is used to kind of feel around its area. When lobsters move in the wild, generally they move backwards. They open up this tail and they'll flip it back like that and move backwards. So they're always ready for whatever is in front of them. When they're trapped, when they're in a bunch of, in with a bunch of other lobsters, what they'll do is they'll start to nibble. They start to nibble on the antenna. So don't buy lobsters if they have a only a tiny little antenna. That means they've been sitting around for a long time. They've been in a lobster tank. They start to lose some of their flavor when they're sitting in a lobster tank for a long time. Now they have two different claws. This guy's spreading them out for you. There's this big one and then one that's a little bit smaller. The smaller one's called the pincer claw. And that's used to hold stuff. That's used to kind of move around the clam while this goes and breaks open the shell. And then it'll tear the meat as it goes right into the lobster's mouth. Now, the cool thing about living in New England is that we have the best lobsters in the world. The only other place in the world that has lobsters anywhere close to ours is there's some off Europe, but there's not, there's not that many of them. They're not a commercial resource. Most of them are consumed in Europe. 
Now, there are different kinds of lobsters or things that look like lobsters all over the world, and they'll look very similar to this. However, the thing that makes ours special is this fifth set of these walking legs. There's five legs here. The fifth leg developed into these huge claws. In lobsters and other places around the world, the other legs just look like this, like these other ones. So there's no meat up there. These grow in really cold water. They're very sweet. They're, they're just a wonderful, wonderful treat. All right. So we're almost done with our lobster here. We're at nine minutes. So our vegetables have started to sweat. I'm going to turn the heat up on this a little bit more. And I'm going to add some tomato paste. So this tomato paste is going to give some, um, some depth to the flavor and some body to our finished soup. All right, so now, check it out. See how that color changed? That one I was just holding, how it was kind of brown or purple, or um, they turn bright, bright red when they're cooked. So we're going to take a couple minutes. I'm going to pull these other lobsters out. We'll get this ready to go, and I'll show you how we'll cook our lobster for the, um, the butter poached lobster. All right, welcome back. So our lobsters are out. I've given a few minutes to cool down because we're going to pull the meat out of them. You want to do it while they're still warm. Um, so the best thing to do is just pull them out, let them sit for a little bit. I do want to take this guy. I'm going to go ahead and put him in our boiling water. Actually, let's check. Yeah, that was a guy. Okay, we're going to put him in the boiling water. We're going to cook for four minutes. This is the one we're going to butter poach, and we're going to pull the meat out of. So I'm going to take a look at our clock so I know what we're doing. Now, for our lobsters. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to tear the tail off. And you're just going to grab the carapace, which is this part here, and twist the tail like this and pull it. Now, this was a female and it had some roe. You can see the roe right here on my finger or right here on the plate. So those are the eggs that have cooked. Now, in a lobster that's um, not cooked, those are really almost, almost blue-green. But it will run up through the tail a little bit. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do two things. I'm going to show you a, a quick way to display a lobster to kind of be showy. And that's going to be to take our lobster tail. I'm going to split it right in half. Just cut right through the shell, like so. I'm going to stick this. And you can see here where the row runs right through there. Now, just like in shrimp, there's an intestinal tract that runs through the tail of a lobster, and you can pull that out, in particular if it has anything in it. And we'll look here. We'll pull that out. I'm going to pop the claws off. One, two. I'm going to take the body of the lobster and just kind of open it up a little bit like that. And we can just kind of stand them up on the plate. I want to pull these bands off and open them up. It's just kind of a neat way to serve it to your family and friends. It's kind of impressive looking when it's all standing up on the plate like that. But we're not here for looks. We're here for lobster rolls. So now I split the tail in half. Real easy to get the meat out. Just like that. Pull that right out. There's some pretty good pieces of meat in these little sections here. So kind of gently break it off. And you can get off a hunk of meat. And I actually got it out of both at one time. And let's see. Now, for the claws, what I like to do actually before I serve it like that is take a nice sharp knife and take, and I'm going to whack it right along the edge of the claw like that and just twist my knife a little bit. And you'll see that I've, cr maybe you can't see it, I've cracked the claw and I can just pull it apart now like that. Or your guests can do it at the table. Now, you notice that there was a bunch of liquid dripping out. That, this is where steaming it is a little bit better because you don't get all that liquid into the shell so it doesn't wash away any flavor of the lobster. So I'm going to pull this claw meat out just like that. And we get a nice whole claw. Now, this white stuff that comes out is actually the lobster's blood more or less. And, it, and there's a lot of proteins in there and it cooks up. 
it's, it's fine to eat. There's nothing wrong with it. Some people don't like the way it looks, but don't freak out if there's a little bit of it on your lobster. So here in the knuckles, you can break the knuckles right at the joint. And I got lucky here and that piece of meat st stuck with it. This one didn't. So you can take your finger, your pinky usually, and just poke the meat out. Now I'm not worried that this, what time we've got here? I'm not worried that this looks perfect because it's gonna get chopped up a little bit to go in our lobster roll. So that's clean, 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 clean. Now all these shells are an awesome resource. <clears throat> We can use those to make stock, to make sauces, and I'm gonna use some stock that I made from lobster shells to make our bisque. At this point, you can see in our pan here that our carrots, onion, celery, and fennel have sweat. The tomato paste has cooked a bit. Now I'm gonna sprinkle in some flour. And this is gonna be the thickening agent for our soup. I'm gonna mix this around, and I wanna keep this on nice, low heat for another 10 minutes or so to let that roux cook. All right, so I'm gonna take this other lobster out of here. We're at our four minute mark on this guy or so. So I'm gonna pull him out and just let him sit and, and come a little closer to room temperature so I'm not burning my hands while I'm working with him. If you're gonna par cook a lobster like this, it actually is better to boil it because the boiling it is much more consistent heat. It's hot all the time, it's hot in all the same areas. Um, so definitely do that, even if the finished product is a little bit better on steaming the lobster, if you're gonna eat it fresh. Now, these lobsters are all about a pound, pound and a quarter, like I said. Some people think that big lobsters aren't good to eat because they get tough, five pounders or seven or eight or 10 pounders. Um, and the meat is all the same, the issue arises because it takes so much longer to cook. There's such intense heat on the outside of the muscle that by the time the inside is fully cooked, the outside is overcooked. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You can kill the lobster while it's live and break it into smaller bits and cook it. You can cook it really, really slow. You can essentially poach it at a lower temperature so that it cooks nice and slowly so that the meat doesn't overcook. But don't, don't feel like, uh, Big lobsters are bad lobsters. They're good lobsters. Big lobsters are old, too. These are creatures that can easily live over 100 years old. For this to get to be one, um, one pound or so, this lobster is probably seven or eight years old. Now, in the United States, it's illegal to catch a lobster unless it meets a certain um, length requirement of this part of the shell. There's actually a hook that the lobstermen use and they go behind this eye socket and they measure to the end here. It's uh, two and a half inches or three and a half inches. It has to be, if not, it has to go back in the water. You know how we looked earlier and we looked to see if we had male or female lobsters? If you ever find a female lobster with berries or that's buried, it means that they have eggs underneath their tail. That means that they're a lobster that's actively producing more lobsters. It's illegal and there's very big fines for catching that. So a lobsterman or even a, a recreational lobster fisher has to take the lobster, cut a little V in its tail and throw it back in the water. And it's illegal for anyone else to take that lobster. That's one of the ways they try to make the fishery sustainable. So what I'm gonna do is just for the sake of time, I'm gonna take a couple minutes. I'm gonna remove all the fully cooked lobster meat out of these two cooked lobsters. Then I'm gonna remove the partially cooked lobster meat out of this lobster here. And um, you don't have to see that part because you've already seen it. Actually, you know what, let me show you one other thing. These little walking legs all have some meat in them. If you break them at the joints, there's a little bit of meat that popped out there, but you can squeeze them with your fingers oftentimes and squeeze out a little bit of meat. Another way to do it is to segment, take each segment and take a little rolling pin and roll it over and you can push the little bit of meat out the end. There is, and I should, I should explain this too, there is some meat inside the body. There are all these gills, which are terrible. They're very bitter. But in between these, there's little hunks of meat as well. So you can be you know, one of the guys that takes the lobsters and just eats the tails and the claws, or you can spend an awful lot of time and move, remove all the meat out of a lobster. If you remove all the meat out of one of these lobsters, one of these one pound lobsters, you're only gonna get three and a half to four ounces of actual meat. So if you're cooking, that's something to think about. If a recipe calls for a pound of lobster meat, you're gonna to need to have four or five lobsters, four or five one pound lobsters. All right, we'll be back in a minute.
All right, so our soup is simmered good and long. Our vegetables are nice and tender. I'm gonna use this immersion blender, stick it in here, and puree it. Like I said before, this is a chunky soup. And so we want there to be chunks. We don't wanna get it super smooth. We're not gonna strain it. And that's pretty good. Mom, if you're watching, do you recognize this? I borrowed this from your house this morning. So our soup is essentially done. We're gonna add a little bit of cream to it. Or a lot of bit of cream, sure, why not? Give that a stir. So now this has gotten most of its lobster flavor from that stock that we made. We are gonna chop up a little bit of lobster and throw it in there and I use some couple big hunks as garnish. I wanna quickly make our lobster salad. I like to use a little bit of celery because I really like the crunch from the celery. We don't need too much though, and I don't wanna overdo it with the celery, but I'm gonna relatively finely dice some here. And we're gonna put some of that, oops, right in there, and actually we're gonna stir this all together in this bowl so you can see and so it's a little bigger. So I didn't break up the lobster too much. I did chop up a little bit of tarragon though and throw it in the bowl. I'm gonna add a little bit of mayonnaise to this. Not too much, just enough to kind of hold it together. And I like to add a little bit of lemon, just for a fresh little zing of acid. That should be enough. And this is it, big, big hunks of lobster. Oh, look at this. I toasted some New England style hot dog buns and New England ones are cut on the sides. That way they absorb more butter. So we're gonna take some of our lobster salad, spoon it right in. Big hunks of lobster. So our soup is done. Our butter poached lobster is all done. Now our lobster rolls are all done. The next step, get Arthur up here and let's see what he thinks about our lobster. Hey Arthur. Hi Matt, welcome back. Thanks for having me here again at Hudson Appliance. Today was lobster day on Wicked Good Ooh, Food. This is a good time of the year for lobster. Yes it is, yes it is. They're all, almost all good times of the year for yeah, lobster, but this yeah. is the best. Nice hard shells, relatively low in cost, which is awesome. We made four different dishes today. Really? One of them, you're not gonna be able to see in the show though. It's gonna be online exclusive content. So if you wanna see our baked stuff lobster and how to make it, you have to go to HudsonAppliance.com and check out the Wicked Good Food link. But on the show, we made a lobster bisque. We made a butter poached lobster, which is like a lazy man's lobster casserole soaked in butter. That's my favorite. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. And just a great classic New England lobster roll, nice buttered buns, and a little bit of tarragon in there. Okay, so can we try uh, this? Sure, let's go ahead. Let's do the lobster roll first. All right. We'll just take a piece of it here. Oh. It is tasty. Like very that tarragon good. in there, yeah. yeah good lobster flavor, good. not too much. Mm. Not too much stuff in it. Let's try this over here. All right. Find a little piece here. After the show, I'll eat the rest of it. That's right. Oh, that's delicious. Right, it's like totally soaked with butter. Mm. And uh, why not, right? Very good, very good. Then we can yeah. give our biscuit whirl here. This is one of my favorites. Mm. 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 So kind of some pureed vegetables in there and some lobster. Yep. Now that's wicked, wicked good. good.